I think I might have an idea how to get into the cellar, but I'm not sure you'll like it. If it involves this filthy dumbwaiter, don't even think about it. True, that wouldn't be very ladylike. You might want to consider what I do for a living before trying to taunt me this cheaply. You said you'd help me, so help me. On my terms. I can't fit in there and I see no other way into the cellar. Hmm. You're asking me to put a lot of trust in you, given the circumstances. I'm not crazy like my father, if that's what you think. I don't think anything yet, because I don't know you. You can trust me, and I will do my very best to learn to trust you. Mm. All right then. Clothes can be washed. Lovely. Pull me back up! I need something to open the doors from the inside once I'm down there. I still need something to open the doors. I'm not crawling in there for the enjoyment of it. We need to examine the me- To find- To be sure- This should do it. Going down. Good luck. See you in a minute. Uh, Dr. Farber. Is everything all right? Leah! Oh, if anything's happened to her... You needn't worry about me. I've been to stranger places than this castle. Follow me. Her neck's been broken, and with some considerable force, it seems. Her necklace looks like gold, albeit a plain design. And it's missing any form of pendant. Still, well beyond a maid's salary. It... Oh, where's that sudden Your draft Your stag is here, my little doe. Little doe? Not exactly the usual way to address the staff. The missing pendant. He threw it into the blood-filled basin. Mr. Gordon? Speak to me, please. David, can you hear me? We're all here, sir. 
all down in the dark. Where... something's coming. The attic, sir. She's in the attic. What just happened? You look like you were in some kind of trance. Perhaps the lack of sleep is affecting me. Or the visions that you think me insane if I describe them to you. I know you're holding out on me. I am on your side, remember? I thought I'd proven that to you already. Perhaps I'm misjudging her. Your father wouldn't speak to me either. Please let me help you. Or not. I'm not a patient. I'm not a madman. Ugh, that's horrible. You're not the one with your hand in it. French. I don't speak French. I do. It says for Clara, forever yours. Who's Clara? <laughs> I don't know. Yet another relative, perhaps? We should ask someone who's been around here for longer. How did you know it was there? The pendant, I mean. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. A hunch. Eddie gave this to her. We should ask him to his face just what his relationship was with her. This isn't another ghost story, is it? Look, you wouldn't understand. I can't... What I do understand is that we cannot accuse a man of murder without proof. They seem to be a house full of carnivores. The scene really did re If Eddie really gave her that pendant, he might be her killer, and I might not be losing my mind. Uh, Mr. McKinnon, who is Clara? The Lady Clara, young Eddie's late mother. A box with some of her belongings are kept in the library, as Master Eddie feels himself more a Gordon than a Mallory. Maybe one...
the belongings of Eddie's mother. Recognize that? The necklace. Is that... A young Eddie and his mother, Clara. I regret to inform you that your husband, Corporal Victor Mallory, number 874511, was killed in action with the enemy on the day of the 14th of September in Ypres. Your husband was involved in an advance against enemy lines. While he and his fellow soldiers fell, the action was successful, and you can take comfort in knowing his sacrifice saved many lives. It was not possible to get his remains away, and he was buried in a soldier's grave. Please accept the condolences of all the company. Yours, Captain Arthur Jones, 4th Army. Thank you for your last letter. My heart soars with every word of yours I read. I touch the ink and imagine your fingers are just inches from mine that we can almost touch, that I can almost feel the warmth of your skin once more. Young Edward grows more like his father each day. You'd be amazed how he shares your looks. I long for the day that this terrible war is ended and you return home to us so we can be a family once more. I shall write to you again soon. Know that until then you are always in our hearts. Your loving wife, Clara. The date. She was writing this when the death notice arrived. Oh, the poor woman. Eddie, I need to ask you about the maid. About Ailsa. You didn't know her! I know that you and her were... That is to say, I know you had feelings for her. What? That's poppycock! You're as deranged as your father was! David, really? You go too far with this behaviour. The police will be here soon. Would you not prefer to clear this up before they get here in case they link Eddie with the crime? Now look here, young lady. How dare you speak? That's enough. Eddie. You gave her this. It was your mother's. Uh, I did. It was. Eddie! I was just trying to cheer her up. She has nothing, and I had no need of it. You know she sends... <sighs> You know she sent most of her money home to her grandmother. Her clothing was ripped, as if someone was trying to force themselves upon her. I would never have hurt her! My little doe. Strange thing to call the help. Uh, how? It was just... just harmless fun, that's all. You're a worthless liar. You think she thought being pressed against a dead animal was harmless fun? How do you know? It's true. Elsa and I... I would never have laid a finger on her. We were in love. I helped her with everything. Even with her chores. A, a rose and... That's quite enough. Eddie, you are obviously upset. And you are not helping, David. Angus, will you please take the young master upstairs? As you say, ma'am. I think you have caused quite enough disruption here. We shall settle this heritage dilemma first thing tomorrow. 
I don't think so. I have more questions now than ever. About my father, the maid, this whole damn house! Have a care, David. Need I remind you of your father's temper? I would never! Given the current mental state of Master Eddie, who should be a part of the Heritage Considerations, any discussion on the topic would be futile at this point. Would you not agree? <sighs> Thank you, Leah. Maybe it's a good thing you're here after all. Impudent brats! What's going on? Did you notice when Margaret got angry? When Eddie mentioned chores involving Rose. What does that mean? It can only have something to do with Lady Rosemary and Aunt Cecilia. And whatever the maid was doing in the attic. The attic? Mm. I saw the maid coming down the stairs with a tray. But there's nothing up there but an empty room. Or so I thought. Interesting. What is it, David? I have to see. David, wait! You have to start confiding in me, David. What are you seeing? I can see echoes. Memories of those who lived here. I see my father as a young boy. He's trying to communicate with me. Perhaps you visited here as a child. Maybe you're remembering stories your father told you of this place when you were young. You see? I said you wouldn't believe me. I saw Edward in the glass house. He was cutting Cecilia with the succoteurs. I saw where he left them. I found them there. How did I do that? How did I know? I can't explain that yet either. So? So we focus on the facts as we know them. <laughs> Go on. You saw the maid's body. Her neck was broken. That was the work of a human, not a ghost, yes? I, I suppose so, yes. Lady Margaret knows more than she's saying, that's for sure. Godspeed getting anything out of that old hag. No, I know. But Eddie might be an easier option. Yes. Yes, we need to find him. And make sure Margaret isn't there to interrupt. I believe she's already gone to bed, but I'll check. You go find Eddie. <laughs> 